Hello, everybody. My name is Ehsan Haq from the University of Rochester. I will be chairing this session. But before I do that, let me ask a question. How many of you think the session after lunch is the worst session? It's a hard one to be in, but we'll try to make it fun by engaging with all of you. And the name of the session is, does anybody remember? I hear mood and what else? Stress and what's the last one? Okay, affect, okay. And what's the relationship among these three different terms? Can anybody give me an example? Bad mood, okay. So let me give one example. We are in Cancun by the beach, so we are in a good mood. That's reducing our stress and putting us in a positive affect, right? So mood is instant. Stress is a physiological phenomena, and affect is a higher level construct. And we have a great set of papers that will tell us the connection across all of them. In terms of logistics, I'm sure you know, but I'm going to repeat it. So each paper gets eight minutes. Around seven minutes, I'll get up and here. That means it's a cue for you to stop so that we are on time. And at the end of each paper, we're going to have a panel discussion. And the purpose of the panel discussion is to ask some open-ended questions. So I'm going to try to engage with all of you by asking some controversial, perhaps some open-ended questions. So together, we can try to answer them. On that note, we have the first speaker and the title and the author list is right here. So I'm not going to repeat it. Take it away. <laughs> OK. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so I'm going to repeat the title then. <laughs> so <laughs> no, uh, I think you have. Uh, this uh, work was uh, conducted with uh, David Beke, uh, Luis Coelho, Thomas Bosch, uh, Satya Mokopassi, Ricardo, Alvaro Schmidt, and myself. And um, I'm here for, uh, today to uh, David, who unfortunately cannot be here today. So um, why recognizing emotions in the vehicle? Um, there, there are many, many reasons, uh, but one very important reason is uh, traffic safety. Um, so it has been shown that um, different types of emotions um, play a very important role uh, for our driving performance, for example. Um, anger obviously leads to aggressive driving. I mean, this uh, is quite obvious. Um, but um, for example, driving performance is affected by all types of emotions, uh, mostly negatively. Um, which I found really interesting. So besides that, um, obviously there's the safety aspect, but we also want to make driving more pleasant and enjoyable. Um, there have been numerous surveys on uh, emotions in the car and how they could play a role. And uh, this survey actually asked drivers uh, what they want uh, from an empathic car. And uh, obviously the first point, uh, make driving more safe. Um, and also the, being able for the car to anticipate certain emotions, um, but also to have an interface that responds empathically and really focuses on the well-being of uh, the drivers and co-drivers. Um, for example, in navigation, where we could choose the happiest route instead of the, just uh, the shortest route or the fastest. Um, sometimes also when certain negative emotions could play a role, I want to hand over responsibility to the car um, but then actually when it's fun again to drive, I might want to take back control. So we started this work um, by looking into facial expressions because that seemed the most obvious uh, thing. Um, and here you can see a video of David uh, driving a car. Um, and I'm not sure if you can guess what, emo what emotion uh, <laughs> is uh, represented by his face, but I couldn't. Um, and that led us really to the uh, um, to a place where we thought, hey, maybe uh, we will have to have a closer look at the context uh, that David is in, instead of looking at his face. And one thing that really became obvious is that we also often very, very much express our emotions when we're communicating with others, um, but in the car that's rarely the case. Um, so let's have a, have a look at the context. Um, here we can see the driving situation. Um, it's a beautiful road, very calm, uh, no traffic. And uh, this obviously is a good indicator um, for maybe a happy or neutral uh, emotion. So again, we have uh, nice weather, um, 
we have no speed limit and no traffic. So there are many uh, interesting works uh, that uh, explore contextual sensing of emotions. Um, we uh, did a work um, that explored um, the basic concepts of doing this in the vehicle uh, at WIST. Um, but there are also other works looking at uh, CAN bus data, for example, which is uh, the central information bus within the car, um, or to also look at cameras and see how uh, we can leverage visual information to recognize emotions. Um, then, obviously, there's also the possibility to um, crowdsourcing, uh, like in the example shown below, um, but this is actually not the focus uh, of our work, so we're really looking into um, the individual context. So our guiding question for our paper was, how can we design contextual emotion recognition, uh, recognition systems for driving? Which modalities play a role? What do I have to take care of? And um, yeah, how can I be successful? Um, in order to do this, obviously, we first need a model of emotions, um, like the uh, Russell circumflex model for effect, which uh, represents emotions on a continuous scale. Um, since um, Eggman's model of discrete emotion is uh, often used uh, also in automotive research, um, we are focusing on this um, in the following. And also, we are looking into context information that can be captured with a smartphone, which is very unobtrusive and doesn't require people to wear um, certain sensors, for example. Investigating all the modalities, um, we can see that uh, we recorded acceleration data, we recorded uh, traffic uh, data, road type, weather data uh, from external APIs. We used a lot of OpenStreetMap features, um, facial expressions um, as a baseline. Um, we um, use the front view camera for um, object detection, um, both detection and segmentation as features. Um, and we also recorded the microphone uh, for annotating our data set every once a minute uh, with uh, subjective emotions, um, but also to record the scene loudness. So let's have a look at our data set. Uh, we collected data from 27 participants, both in Germany and Brazil. Um, we had roughly 11 hours of driving, um, 48 sessions, and what I found really surprising was that uh, people expressed on average uh, 2.79 um, distinct uh, emotions. Um, now let's have a look at the annotation process so that you can get an impression of this. Right. <laughs> so this is our great actor, David. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's have a look at which uh, features are most informative. Um, we found that uh, age plays a role, the uh, emotion before driving. Um, so this is something that uh, we could also ask um, our drivers for before they go and get into the vehicle. But really most importantly is speed. and. Um, yeah, this is uh, really um, the most informative feature we could, f uh, we could find. Uh, no traffic, um, we can, w once, once we can drive freely, uh, that really plays uh, a very important role. Um, by the way, these were analyzed by um, uh, looking at the um, yeah, um, feature importance um, using a random forest uh, classifier. Um, then, um, also the weather plays a very uh, distinct role, um, especially the temperature outside, also the wind speed, um, and also some information about the road, like the number of lanes, uh, the road type, is it asphalt, is it a uh, um, yeah, secondary road, is it a motorway? Um, and then from the visual features, we could also extract that uh, the vegetation plays an important role once I'm sort of in the uh, vegetation, in a forest, um, I can actually um, have a positive influence on the mood um, and also uh, the visibility of the sky. We looked at, um, yeah, now bundling all those features together. Um, one thing I would like to highlight is we conducted a leaf one participant out cross validation um, to be, yeah, most objective about how good these uh, measures are. So for the visual complexity, this is actually um, quite good. We can 
gain a lot of data from uh, visual streams, especially from the segmentation and counting pixel densities. This, of course, is a very basic approach and we see a lot of potential for the future. Um, also, the audio information con didn't convey a lot of information here um, and the GPS inferred features only uh, really provided us with uh, a lot of information that we could use. So for all features, we have an average accuracy of 59%. Um, we also looked into different modality trade-offs, and that's something that uh, I would suggest uh, yeah, to have a look at the paper, which uh, lists like privacy issues and uh, required sensors and complexity of pre-processing, for example. For future work, um, we are looking into using emotion prediction for navigation, um, especially those features which are um, remotely acquirable, like uh, the weather, the traffic information. Uh, we can also simulate speed and everything, so um, this is something that we can do over a whole map and then optimize for the routes with uh, the trade-off between uh, travel time and, uh, for example, positive emotions. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and looking forward to your questions. Can I ask the next speaker to set up while well, you can ask a question? While you're thinking about the question, how many of you are using the app for the conference? Some of you? Okay, good, most of you. There is a chat feature, so you can put your question there. Authors can answer it directly. I will be monitoring them. If it's not answered, we'll bring it up. So that's one way to engage asynchronous. Okay, I have one question for you, and I'll come back to it yeah. uh, later. Some of the features that are indicative are pretty obvious. So my question is, do you need emotion to tell us those insights? Do you need to study emotion to tell us that speed is the most indicative? Uh, yes, I think it's, it's always important to ground it on something, right? Um, and uh, something I found, um, yeah, even, even maybe it's even too obvious is uh, that relation between speed and, and, and emotion, and that can be leveraged on such an easy, easy way to adapt our interfaces, um, but still always with having this uncertainty in mind that obviously we're, we're not certain about the, the emotion that a person will feel. Thank you. To be continued. Thank you. <laughs> and for the next paper, I have a quiz. Can, you can anybody tell how many authors are here? And how many countries? <laughs>